As we move toward excellence in education, it is essential that students are given the opportunity to provide input regarding how to improve Arkansas's education system. The Arkansas Coalition for Student Voice in Education is a group of students who are facilitating these very important conversations. The student group initiated a student survey that was completed by more than 5,000 students from around the state and held multiple student forums. These outstanding student leaders presented student survey results at the Vision for Excellence in Education and Arkansas Accountability System Steering Committee meeting in November, followed by a presentation to the State Board of Education on January the 12th. My name is Zach Fredericks from Batesville High School, and first off, I'd just like to thank y'all for allowing us to come here and show y'all all the wonderful information we got from all of these surveys. So at this time, I'd like to ask my friend Grace to come up and talk to you a little bit about the charts. Hi, my name is Grace Brandt. I am a 10th grader at the Harrison High School, and I'm going to be showing you guys a PowerPoint that shows a little bit of the data that we have collected as the ACSVE by interviewing students all over Arkansas by an online survey. So the first slide is, how well do you retain the knowledge gained during class? So on average, there was 3.46 out of five. So one would be they retain hardly any knowledge at all or no knowledge, and five being almost all of it. How well do you benefit from the teaching methods used in the classroom? On average, 3.35. And as you can see, there's a higher concentration in the right end of the spectrum, which is more students benefiting from the teaching methods used in their classrooms. The majority of your peers pay attention during class. Now, as you can see, 56.5% of students said that was true, but nearly half of the students said that was false. So that is Arkansas students saying that almost half of the students do not pay attention when they are in the classroom. The teachers attempt to help every student understand a lesson before moving on to the next one. That is 67% true, which is great, but that is still 32% of teachers that are not providing all of the information necessary to their students before going on to the things that they must teach next. I see my principal in classes during the day. That is only 31.3% true. So 70%, 7 tenths of students don't see their principal in their classes at school at all, which is a very large concentration of Arkansans. So we had 5,293 students respond, 10 open responses per student, and 52,930 responses to read. So I'm going to have Zach come up next and tell a little bit about the summits that we held. So at these summits, what would happen is we took, printed out copies of all the responses that we got. And we can only trace these responses back to the congressional districts. We cannot trace them back to the school. So we don't know exactly where that problem is coming from. But at these, we had representatives from multiple school districts come and disseminate through this information with us. And with this, we filtered in, into four categories, which were faculty and administration, curriculum, facility and resources, and student personal concerns. And after disseminating the information through these open responses, the top five responses for each question were recorded. Good morning, uh, my name is Kate Dixon, and I will be sharing with you what this survey revealed to us about faculty and administration. So number one, teachers need to differentiate in their learning styles. Not all students learn from a teacher standing up at the front of a classroom lecturing to them. Number two, students are not allowed to progress at their own pace. Rather, this be faster or slower than the norm. Number three, there needs to be more disciplinary action to those who jeopardize either the mental or physical health of any other students. Number four, students are under the perception that administration focuses just a little bit too much on the smaller issues and things uh, like dress code. But to end on a positive note, students would agree that about 78% of the teachers do take the time to know them. Hi, my name is Amanda Colo, and I'm a senior at Batesville High School. 
Um, one problem that we saw in the survey that students brought up a lot was curriculum. Um, number one, students need more flexible time for extra help and makeup work. Um, this is also a very big problem because students feel like maybe um, the time they need to go make up their work, their teachers, it's not convenient for their teachers or vice versa, which is very hard to overcome, but a suggestion would be a college-based schedule that would allow for a flex time during the day that students could go and talk to their teachers and stay on their own pace. Number two, some students feel as though the amount of time in an and in between classes is in inadequate, meaning that time to get to their next class is not enough time. Students are getting tardies and things like that. Um, number three, there's too much technology-based work and sometimes distracts from the actual concept being learned. Um, now, in 2017, we do see many com computers throughout the classroom, which is great, but sometimes the computers might shut down or like are very slow, which causes a very big dist distraction. Number four, there needs to be more variety in the schedule, more challenging classes, as well as work pay, play skill sets, including taxes, finances, insurance, and interview skills. Number five, there needs to be a learning style differentiation because not every student learns the same way, which is very hard because, you know, a teacher has their lesson plan and not every student will learn the same way and sometimes they feel like they're behind in class, but, um, we some students feel like you know teachers do not cater to their needs, which is also very hard. But it helps when the teacher knows what the student needs in the next class. So, yes, hi, I'm Kelly Gill. Um, throughout the survey, students expressed a lot of their personal concerns, and the largest among these was food. They felt like the quantity was not enough, the quality was not good, and the prices were just too high. And without a meal, students can't focus in class. Another large issue was bullying. Um, students just didn't feel safe in school because the discipline action wasn't strict enough. And if a student doesn't feel safe in school, they may just stop coming to school. They also dealt with favoritism. The students who were favored obviously were fine, but the ones who were not were not treated fairly. They would be ignored in class or they would just get in trouble more often. Students also complained that they weren't allowed to work ahead. As Kate mentioned earlier, they were taught to work at the teacher's pace that she set out and not their own. And so when they would finish early and had nothing to do, they would get bored with the class and lose interest. Mm -hmm. The last big problem that we saw was that students wanted more life skill classes, such as things about taxes, credit cards, mortgages, things that they're going to face at some point in their life and they felt they were unprepared for. Through all these concerns, there are also a lot of positive remarks, and the largest was that there was a lot of peer-to-peer -peer support. So there were a lot of students that helped other students with homework, missing assignments, and just feeling comfortable in the school, which I feel is a large part of a student um, learning and taking away from school. My name is Jake Ward and like Kelly said there was a surprisingly large amount of issues concerning food and um, a lot of the students said that that the cost of the food and the quality were um, really big issues. And uh, also there was lots of people talking about the availability of the technology at their school. Like for example, if they needed to do research on a project, then a website would be blocked or something. Or if they needed to do, go home and do it, then they wouldn't have access to a computer or internet. Um, there are also lots of students that commented about the distribution of funding within their school. For example, they would say that their textbooks were, there weren't many of them, or they were outdated or old and torn up. There are also lots of people who said that different classes or clubs didn't get as much funding as others, like art is what they said the most. All right, and so kind of a little summary of what all of those were, were the four main points were that teachers needed to differentiate for better learning and that everyone does not learn the same way and that a lot of students felt like they were falling behind or that they weren't getting to move ahead because they were focused on the students that are behind. 
the second one was that the students wanted flexible time for extra help, more like a college-based schedules that allowed flex time during the day. The third one was food, which was a big one, that some people couldn't afford it, that their portion sizes were too small, and that the quality just wasn't up to par. And the last one was that technology is not always available and that the curriculum should not be technology-based and is sometimes not even necessary. And so with the information that we have, our next steps right now are that we had over 75 ambassadors attend the Harrison, Batesville, and Little Rock summits. And they will meet twice a year to, with data to disseminate, and the data will be from ambassador research. And at this time, we'd like to take any questions that y'all have for us.